Welcome to the Skyhawks Coaches Corner brought to you by Mercy Regional Medical Center and Centura Health and being filmed this week in the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. I'm your host Bob Bonner. Joined this week by new head women's basketball coach Taylor Harris. How thanks for coming Taylor. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean thanks for coming to Durango. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, we're excited to talk Skyhawks basketball with you and, yeah. and, and what brought you to Durango but uh, you know, your last stop, Miles City Community College, um, took you a while to get down here. You yeah, finished 16th in the country. Yeah. I mean, and, and we're down here. You had a little cheering contingent watching you in the, in the junior college tournament. Uh, finished a, a very successful tenure there. Tell us a little bit about first, how do you get to Miles City Community College? And then, and then what brings you down here from there? Yeah, I think, you know, I found out about Miles when I was an assistant at Regis University. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine was an assistant at Black Hills State, and then he took the job at Miles, Nate yeah. Vogel, and he had a great two years, and we just became friends. And then when he left, he told me that it was probably a, a good job for me. You know, I had wanted to try to be a head coach. Right. And I think it was a good opportunity, a great school with great administration and, and a good conference where, where you could be really successful in. And just kind of went through the interview process, and the athletic director, Jerry Olson, he, rec he knew me from when I was at Metro State um, okay. back in 2013 when we were in the national title game okay. in, in Atlanta. He was down there, and he, he watched our game. And so we kind of had that familiarity thing, and it was just a, it just worked out. It was just a good fit, and it was an amazing two years, okay. an amazing two years where I got to grow and, and learn how to be a head coach. Take us back now. You've mentioned, you've mentioned Metro. You've mentioned Regis. Talk a little bit about your, your journey player coach uh, to bring you up to that point. You yeah. know, what, what else, what did you do pre-Miles City? Well, you know, I started my career at, at Metro State. Okay. You know, I, I kind of just started as a manager. You know, okay. I, was, I was that guy that every day I, I was going to school at Metro State sure. and every day I would go up to the men's basketball office. And I was like, hey, I, I want to coach, okay. you know, and they're like, okay, all right. But I kept coming. You know, and then eventually they would ask me to go, go get the mail and then count T-shirts. And then I was helping with camps. And then next thing you know, you know, I'm a manager. And the beautiful thing about a Division II school is as a manager, you can wear a lot of hats. Sure. You know, and, and I just kind of stuck around and, and, and worked hard. And I was very fortunate to work under great head coaches, Brandon Hayes and, and Derek Clark. And you got to figure out what it takes to win. And right. In that time, I just remember the epic games that we had with the Skyhawks men's basketball team. I mean, those are some of the, my most sure. memorable games when I was at Metro State. And then the opportunity to get a full-time assistant job okay. um, under a new head coach, Molly Marin, who I had a lot of ties to. You know, um, Amy Ball, who used to be Amy Moore, the leading scorer mm -hmm. in Skyhawks women's basketball history. Her husband is one of my best friends, Michael Ball. And his sister played with Molly Marin at Regis. And, you know, you see with me, it's like all sure. these people that I know, this big sure. circle of how, how I ended up where I am. And the network. The network. Okay. That's, that's, that's how it is. And, and I was at Regis for four years and had an amazing four years with, with Coach Marin. And it was, it was amazing. Now, you, you talk about the network. Is that, did you identify? Uh, you're obviously goal-oriented. I yeah. mean, to, to, to come up... Uh, through the through these various systems the yeah. way you did um you know merit-based advancement <laughs> um th those are all good things did did you recognize early you know i mean you had a goal to to be a head basketball coach did you recognize that networking was going to be a part of that or are you just sort of that people person that that ended up being one of the things that came naturally that made you sort of go hey i might end up being able to make it as a coach someday well to be honest there's a little bit of both okay. i mean someone like me i didn't play college basketball sure. you know i didn't have a coach that i played under that could help me okay. so i knew that it had to be me you know okay. and but i'm naturally a people person i love getting to know people i like serving people i, I just like helping and being there for people so Naturally, my personality comes out of just wanting to say hi to everybody, get to know everybody, how can I help everybody? And I think one of the things that was important to me as an assistant coach was to be friends with all the other assistant coaches okay. in our conference. Because at the end of the day, they're just like you, you know, on the same journey. And that's just something that's really important to me. I'm one of those coaches that I just want to get to know everybody. Okay. And I want to be friends with everybody and, and build that network. Not for selfish reasons, because, right. but, but the reality in this, in this business is that sometimes opens doors for you. Sure. Um, but I just really love getting to know people and being, being a, someone who can serve other people. 
Okay. So you've, uh, yeah, you went from having no mentors to sounds like having several, and now yeah. you've transitioned. Do you, you, you know, do you feel like you're uh, now you're in a head coaching position? Um, have been for a couple of years. Are you feeling that that you're helping to mentor others now? Is it coming full circle, or, or where are you at in that now? Yeah, it does. I mean, there's there's a you know friends of mine that I've I've been friends with for my shoot, this is now 12 years, you know, this okay. is my 13th year in coaching, you know, that, um, that have been with me from the beginning, you know, that um, now I can kind of bounce ideas off of because, you know, I have been a head coach for a couple years and there's, there's people that say, you know, how did you have the success at Miles, you know, what did you do, what's your secret and stuff like that, but really at the end of the day, I'm a learner, you know, mm -hmm. I'm probably ask more questions, you know, than anybody. I was on the phone for 20 minutes this morning with a friend of mine just asking questions, you know, about the Division II level as a head coach, and I'm always learning, mm -hmm. you know, but it is pretty, it is pretty cool just to see, you know, friends of mine that have been on this journey with me for, for 12 years, you know, that I've watched them grow, and we've kind of grown up the ranks together. It's just it's amazing to see. And at the same time, I mean, I can, I can hear a real fondness in your voice for, for the people you've worked with. Yeah. Um, there are also the people you've worked against. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of sports. There's mm -hmm. the, you know, these are the people you compete against too on, on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, how, you know, how's that, how's it, you know, I, I mean, most of us who, who've been involved in sports, we, we appreciate the friendly rivalry, but yeah. some of them turn not so friendly. Um, is, is it just your natural inclination? Do you, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say we've all created enemies in competition or, or yeah. frenemies or whatever, but <laughs> Do, do you tend to shake out more to look for that positive in the relationship with somebody and, and be able to truly shake hands and walk away? And is that something that, that you like to emulate for your players too? Yeah, that's, that's me. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the guy that I give the other coach a hug. Like I'm, yeah. I'm genuinely happy to see them. And, and the competition part, like that's great. Like sure. that's, that's what we do. But I just get excited to see my friends, you know, and, and to catch up with them and talk to them. Like I, I mean it when I say all these coaches in this league are friends of mine, you know, and when I see and when we compete against them on Friday and Saturdays, you know, I'm going to give them a hug, you know, and I think that's important for our players to see that too, that like, this is a game, sure, you know, and yeah, we compete and that's great. But at the end of the day, we're, we're people com competing against each other, entertaining for the fans, growing as, as women. Right. And I try to just be an example for, for our players to see that, you know, you can get pretty far with building positive relationships with those that you're in the same area of, of work in. It's in, in the world today, there's a debate right now is over whether sports should be or, or are better used to build bridges or to burn them. Um, it's kind of nice to see, especially where you're emulating behavior and teaching young people that, no, sports is an enterprise that, that's best used to build bridges. Yeah. So that's obviously the relationships is part of where your passion for coaching comes from, your relationships guy. What about, you know, uh, what about the rest? Where, where, where else does that fire come from? Is, is it a basketball fire or is it a coaching fire in general? What, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the, the competitive part because obviously you're good at that. You, yeah. you just uh, took a team through into the second round of the national tournament. So tell us a little bit about the, the competitive side there and in, in just the coaching side where your passion for coaching comes from. Well, it really is relationships. I mean, I, I coach to mentor and empower women Mm -hmm. to be leaders and developing those close loving relationships is is why I coach I, it just so happens to be basketball sure. you know okay. um, that's just my passion and it has been since I've been little um, but basketball to me is like fifth on the ladder you know okay. uh, of what's important to me okay. I mean number one is the relationships and and making sure that we have a program full of women that want to give and receive love, you know, from their coaches and, right. and, their, and their teammates. That's important to me, okay. you know. Um, academics, of course, very important sure. to me, too. You know, I, I truly believe that we can compete for a national championship in grade point average, you know, every year. That's okay. something that we were able to do at Miles. You know, so there's that co competition with, with the academic side, too. Right. You know, and, and I really have this passion to have these women on our team be amazing citizens, you know, okay. and, and develop their social skills and make great social decisions. And, you know, we're on this journey and, and I am just so lucky to be able to mentor and be alongside these women on their journey from 18 to 22 or, or to 23. And when you're so close with the people that you build these relationships with and you love them, you want what's best for them. 
You know, they want what's best mm -hmm. for you. And when you're in that competitive environment like the game, that love and those close emotions really come out. And you will do whatever you can to win because it makes that whole group better. Okay. And it's amazing to me. I, I mean, I'm not one. Do I hate to lose? Yeah, but everybody sure. says that. Everybody says that. But I just, I love to love. And that naturally just comes out in that com the com competitive atmosphere where, you know, we just love each other so much that we just don't want to lose. And, and it sounds like, particularly for the women you coach, that, that competition and success in competition isn't necessarily just about the W. It's about the empowerment you yeah. get from competing alongside others and, and succeeding and, and, and arming the, the players you coach with, with that as a tool moving forward in life. I, yeah, I mean, I truly believe that if we take care of the relationship, if we take care of the academics, if we take care of the the social growth that we have. Right. If we have fun, like I like to have fun, sure. you know, sure. I, I, I really do. If we do all that, then the winning naturally takes care of itself. Like we, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's just who I am. Like I'm not one of those coaches that's just like always talking about, we got to win, we got to win, right, we got to right. win. I just want to get the right women in here, love them, treat them the right way, give them a positive experience, and the winning just, it comes. You're gonna, as, in, and as an old school former coach myself, you know, baseball especially, yeah. come on, you've got to honor this game. Yeah. Far more likely that we're gonna hear you tell your players you need to honor each other. Oh yeah. Then yeah. you said basketball's about fifth down the list of the yeah. priorities. It's, it really is about honoring and loving each other for your team. It is, and it's, it's, it's loving each other first, you know, and then even, with our opponent, respecting and loving our opponent as well because they're giving us, us the opportunity to compete together for, for one goal, for winning. And, and that kind of goes back to what you brought up earlier, like with our, the other coaches. Like, I'm grateful for the opportunity to right. see them. I'm, I'm happy to see their success, and I'm happy to see them. You know, I, I think just having that gratitude and that love towards basketball is, is really, that's, that's me. Nice, nice. I'm excited for the culture. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you're bringing to our program. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about basketball and, right. uh, and, and some of the other sides of it. We will return in just a moment with Coach Taylor Harris. A new surge of COVID-19. With all the talk in the news, it's easy to stop listening. But here on the front lines, this virus is incredibly real. So please, wear a mask. Stay six feet apart and wash your hands. Avoid gathering with people outside of your household. Stay connected to your doctor. And don't delay care when you need it. Please, let's have each other's backs. Welcome back to the Skyhawks Coaches Corner, brought to you by Centura Health and Mercy Regional Medical Center. We're filming at the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum, and I'm joined this week by head women's basketball coach Taylor Harris. Uh, Taylor, we talked a little bit, we talked quite a bit about your philosophy, uh, the culture that, that you're looking to bring to the program here. Um, you know, let's uh, now let's talk about the basketball that sure. you're bringing. What uh, you know, what drives you? What what are we going to look for? Uh, from your teams offensively and defensively or you know what's the goal uh, I know it's 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 gonna be a process ultimately what do you hope that process is gonna lead to and look like yeah well I think you know a lot of what exactly we'll do will depend on what the roster looks like but mm -hmm. I think that there's some things that are consistent with what we're gonna do I mean number one is you know the passion that we'll play with I think that everybody that watches you know our Skyhawks team play will be thinking to, my, to themselves like, gosh, why is that team playing so hard? Um, our voices, why is that team talking so loud? You know, that's just something that's going to be okay. consistent. Um, offensively, you know, I'm not a coach that's like, I want to play fast and all this right. stuff. I, I, I like to control the tempo. Okay. You know, on offense, um, we'll have a lot of ball screens. You know, okay. we'll have a lot of spacing on the court. And I like to give our athletes a lot of freedom, you know, and so that they can make the decisions. You know, not a lot of set plays, just kind of put them in positions and, and give them that freedom to, to make their own decisions. Okay. You know, that's really important okay. to me offensively. Um, defensively, you know, again, like to dictate the tempo, you know. Mm -hmm. If a team likes to play fast, we're going to try to slow them down. Okay. If they like to play slow, we're going to try to speed them up okay. with a wide variety of, you know, pressing, you know, man, zone. I mean, people that watched our Miles team last mm -hmm. year will just say, well, you, you guys set a million ball screens. You, you did a 2-2-1 two, two, press mm -hmm. back to a 2-3 zone, and, and it was that was it. You did it right. every time. And 
I kind of like being simple. You know, I don't. I don't want to make things too difficult. It didn't hurt to watch you play alongside Syracuse making a run in the men's <laughs> yeah. tournament this year either. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a couple I, I know watching uh, with with one of your predecessors, Jason Flores, watching yeah. watching tournament games both years in the men's tournament. You know, and I'm like, well, you know, it works for Jim Beheim for yeah. for long enough. Um, you know, and and it did work for you. It was it yeah. was pretty obvious, and and it was also pretty obvious that you had, uh, you know, in only two years you're up there, you were able to, to bring in some of the personnel to incorporate that style. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about recruiting, the overall philosophy of that. I thought you had a nice blend looking at your roster of, of some local Montana mm -hmm. girls uh, on the roster, which I think, I, I always think it's, it's important, especially junior college, division two, too, that have a few players who already identify with the brand. Um, but you also blend that with with a lot of international talent I saw on that team. Um, you know, you, I was like, oh my gosh, you must be the Crocodile Dundee rec recruiter. <laughs> a lot of girls from New, New Zealand, Australia, that yeah. area. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, about recruiting. You seem to, it, it, it seems to be a bit of an adventure that you enjoy almost, I just looking it. at your roster. Yeah, I love it. I, I think my philosophy is to, to bring a cultural diversity okay. to not only our program, but to the school and mm -hmm. to the city, and, and I think you know, yes, we did that, you know, up in Miles, but I'm looking forward to doing that here, sure. you know, in Durango as well. Um, it's important to get the local athletes. Right. Very important. So my philosophy is one where, you know, I want, you know, half the roster to be local or, you know, regional. We're in an area here in Durango where, you know, New Mexico, Arizona, mm -hmm. and Utah are pretty much considered local because sure. we're right there. Um, but then also bringing in that international diversity. You know, I think that it's amazing for, for these young women that grow up in Colorado and grow up in New Mexico mm -hmm. to learn what's it like to grow up in Barcelona, Spain? Mm -hmm. What's it like to grow up in Sydney, Australia? Someone from Melbourne, Australia may be coming to Colorado and, and they've never seen these mountains before. Sure. They've never seen this snow before. What's it like growing up you know, on a ranch with horses? You know, that's something right. that, that they, don't, they don't see. I think that just adds to the, ex to the college experience, right. you know, for, for our student athletes. It helps that these international players are very good. Yeah. Like, let's not kid <laughs> ourselves here. Yep. Like, it helps that they're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that just goes back to the networking and the relationships. Like, with jobs, it's the same as recruiting. You know, when I was at Metro State, we, we coached Australians that are playing professionally in Australia right now. And when, when I got the job up in Miles, you know, um, Mitch McCarron called me and said, hey, call this person. He'll help okay. you get some players. And I just networked and networked and networked. And now, like, you know, I spent some time in Sydney, Australia in, in December of 2019 and really developed some, okay. some relationships there that, you know, will be for life for recruiting, okay. you know. And I think that, you know, we can expect a roster that's going to have, have Colorado kids, of course. Sure. You know, I was born and raised in Colorado. Sure. You know, we're going to have New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Arizona. We're going to have the, the American regional players. Sure. But we're also going to bring in, you know, athletes from Spain. We're going to bring in athletes from Australia. We're going to bring athletes from Eastern Europe. And we're going to bring athletes from all over the place um, because that's important. That's part of the experience here. And I can only imagine that that the network starts growing itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the some of the players you've coached that go back and play professionally or coach in Australia, uh, or Spain or Eastern Europe they end up being sort of your your gatekeepers, I suppose, for, for recruiting in those areas. That network mm -hmm. is just, it's not getting smaller, it's growing for you, isn't it? I mean, it, it is. I mean, and I'm a very trusting person, you know, and, and I think you look at, like, at, at Miles with some of our top Australian players mm -hmm. that we got, I maybe watched 10 seconds of film. Like, yeah. I just trusted people when they said, hey, this person will be good for you. Like, I, I trust okay. that more than, you know, a highlight tape. That's just what's okay. important to me. Um, it's just really cool to, to watch the growth of these international student athletes, you know, coming to a different country, growing as women, mm -hmm. you know, and, and watching those relationships blossom, like, it's so cool. Like, that's why we coach, it's so amazing. We're gonna get off script just a little bit because yeah. you, you intrigue me, the, the depth that, that, that you sell out to the relationships on this. And I'm just gonna ask you a question. We got yeah. a little extra time. I love it. Um, you know, you, you form a bond pretty quickly with some of these girls that you recruit or that, you know, obviously someone tells you, hey, this is someone I think you ought to look at. You look for a few seconds and then you're gonna talk to that player. You're gonna, um, 
you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to say this, you know, maybe this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. um, that's still valuable though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you value those short-term relationships? Have any of those turned into longer term or maybe you, you still keep an eye on a girl that, that didn't end up coming for one reason or another? Have you formed some of those relationships oh, also? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's student athletes from Australia that I've talked to that just weren't a fit probably maybe for our culture mm -hmm. that are still playing in America. Yeah you know, yeah. that, that I'm still keeping my eye on and, you know, check in with every, every now and then. Right. Those relationships are just as val valuable, you know. But like you said, I, I put so much into that relationship right. in the recruiting process. To me, if you're willing to buy in and, and open your heart and be vulnerable and love, and if you're willing to, you know, be so disciplined academically and make great decisions socially, to me that's more important than any talent or anything that I'll see on film. And if, and if one of those things you're like, man, coach, I, I really want to have that amazing social life, you know, like that sure. I see on the movies, right. like I, I saw on American Pie, like I want that. <laughs> um, great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, it might not be the best fit with our program, but I'm going right. to help you. I'm sure. going to help you find a program that could be a fit for you, and I'm going to yeah. follow you. And, and just I've got to imagine that I don't want to call it easier. Um, recruiting will be different. Uh, you know, Miles City, especially you talk about some of the – the international kids and I'm from Newcastle, yeah, Wyoming. Yeah. We talked on the way in about, uh, it, you know, one of the nice things about living in Durango is that winter doesn't hurt yeah. <laughs> anymore. You know, I can only imagine for, you know, a kid from from Sydney or, or beach towns in yeah. Australia, um, that transition. I remember the story: old Finnis Dembo uh, playing at the University of Wyoming, recruited out of Texas, and he got off the airplane in the winter and, and made a snow angel. Yeah. And that's when Jim Brandenburg went, oh, "Okay, this kid's gonna stick." How much you, you talked about identifying the culture and 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 you know how how hard is it to to go okay yeah the winter's going to be tougher than they're used to they're going to be away from their family how hard is it to identify that okay I can help this kid be comfortable here and enjoy this experience because sometimes sometimes there are bad fits and it's a bad experience for a kid how mm -hmm. how cognizant of are you of that when you're when you're recruiting and and it's not just getting hey I think I can get this player on my team mm -hmm. and she can help my team but maybe this isn't the best for the player. I've learned that I can probably tell in the nonverbals and in the body language. I like to FaceTime. Okay. You know, that's what I do with recruiting. You know, okay. I don't, I text, of course, sure. but I don't talk on the phone. I FaceTime okay. and, and I talk about those values right away. Okay. And I look for those nonverbals and, you know, what that body language is when I start using the word love. Right. You know, I, right. I, can, I can tell a sure. lot with that. Okay. You know, but then we get through that, and then I talk about I talk about the pink elephant in the room. You know, especially with these internationals, mm -hmm. like we are in a beautiful ski resort town, mm -hmm. just beautiful, yeah. absolutely. And I send pictures and I sure. send videos and all of that stuff. But if you want to be by a beach, <laughs> it's not going to work, and right. that's okay. Right. And that's okay. So I also kind of learned to kind of figure that out sure. really early in the process. Sure. You know. Um, some people, that's just what they want to do. If they come to right. America, they want to be in a huge city. Right. They want to be by a beach. Right. Um, you know, that's okay. Right. But then there's those people that when, you know, I take a picture of the, the landscape outside. Right. And I, I took a video of me running along the river over the weekend. And then, some, you know, those girls that are like, oh, my gosh, that is beautiful. I want to live there. I want to live there. I want to be there. Then, you know, it takes care of itself. You yeah. know, it, it really does. Um, then we can go through that relationship part. But I've, I've learned to kind of figure it out pretty quickly if it's going to be a fit. Okay. Nice. We're going to have just a few minutes when we come back. We will take one more break and come back and visit with Coach Taylor Harris right after these. Welcome back to the final segment of the Skyhawks Coaches Corner, brought to you by Centura Health and Mercy Regional Medical Center, being filmed here at the Dakota and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Joined this week by head women's basketball coach Taylor Harris, the new guy in town. Yep. Um, that, you know, yeah, we talked about. You obviously, did a nice job your last job. You were uh, you were in the National Junior College Championship tournament up until a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you guys made it to the Sweet 16, so. 
kind of haven't hit the ground running here in Durango. So I assume you've met your, your returning players. Um, you know, tell us what, you know, what's the next month or so look like for Taylor Harris and his new job? Yeah, I think it's making sure my head, you know, isn't spinning. You know, it's the old drinking stop. water from a fire hose <laughs> scenario, isn't it? <laughs> it kind of is. Um, but my first order of business was really, you know, getting to know the women that are, mm -hmm. are going to be coming back next season and really diving into those relationships. Shocker that I talk about sure, relationships, sure. right? Um, you know, when, when I first got this job, it, the first thing I did was FaceTime with, with the girls, okay. you know, and then I was able to come here for, for a weekend and, and spend some time okay. individually. When, when I got here last week, we did some walking meetings with, with each girl, you know, just around campus, and it's building that relationship letting those girls know that I am committed and devoted to building that relationship of love and that I believe in them. That's really what this is. Um, that's more important than anything else that we have going on. Of course, recruiting, you know, and sure. recruiting is going well. It, it is, it is going really well. And I'm excited later this summer to unveil what our roster is going to look like. But I really have to let these, these six women know that, that, I'm here for them, and I believe in them, and then I can't wait to watch them blossom as women and as basketball players and as students, letting them know what the expectations of our culture is like, sure. and those, those meetings have been outstanding, and I'm just so proud of the women that are, that are returning, and, and I can't wait to watch them grow. Good, good. So what do you do? You, you're, you're building those relationships. Mm -hmm. You're doing some recruiting. You've, you've walked around campus. Uh, you know, what is... What's your summer going to look like? What uh, you know? Do, do, have you have you been able to share with those with those girls who, who are coming back? Uh, you know, do they know what to expect as far as as far as offensively, defensively, some of the things? Uh, you know, do, do they have their do they have their homework for the summer? Yeah, they do. You know, and I think to their credit, you know, they they followed the miles journey too, you know, watching those games, and I made sure to send them the links to those games, and I said, hey, this is how we're going to play. You know, th this is how we're going to play. So watch it and see if you can see yourself in this system. And in our meetings, I talk about, you know, with the summer. I'm kind of a different coach where I want to empower them to get better on them o their own and not have me, you know, tell them, hey, this is what you should be doing. This is what you should, you should be right. doing and all that stuff. I want to empower them, you know, to, to be responsible for their own growth. I've told them some of the you know, shooting drills that we might be doing next year and some of those expectations okay. like that. But I really want them to be responsible for their own growth. And, and I think they like that. I think they really like that, uh, that empowerment and that freedom, you know, to be responsible for themselves. And uh, you just revealed, again, we're off script all the way because uh, interesting thing, you accepted the job here before you had finished the season. Yeah. Miles, not the easiest position for a coach to be in. Um, I didn't anticipate, though, the benefit of that was that it did open the door for you to reach out to your new players and say, hey, go ahead and watch mm -hmm. and see and have questions. And, and, and did that sort of help those first conversations when you got here? Were the, were the girls asking about some of the things that they saw in those games? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, did, you, did you start to, to form the basketball relationship, too, maybe, because they had been able to see some of them? Absolutely. You know, I was receiving texts from them, you know, after the games, you know, saying, congratulations. I, sure. I loved watching your team play. Um, and it's not just them. It's, you know, it's, it's our, you know, Jason Flores was texting me. Brandon mm -hmm. Leinbach was texting me. You know, they, the support that you get from, from everybody on this campus was incredible. But, but I think for the girls coming back, for them to be able to kind of follow that journey, watch me as a coach, you know, and I told right. them, watch me. Watch what I'm like right. during the games. And I think they had that sense of uh, pride, you know, watching Good. this. And it really helped with those conversations. The, the sense of belonging yeah. started to develop before you even got here. Yeah, it did. That's it did. outstanding, Coach. All right, we are getting the uh, signal from our producer. Uh, so let's play a little game I like to call the one. I'm going to ask you five questions, rapid fire. Okay. Just hit me with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. All right. Uh, your, your favorite sports movie? Uh, Rocky. Rocky. Nice. Yeah. Boy, that, you talk about going old school. Now yeah. you sound... You, say, you, you really sound very progressive as a coach, but, man, you just went with the oldest school sports movie I can yeah, almost think like, of. that's just what came to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then, uh, let, good. Maybe you'll surprise me with this one, too. Uh, your favorite athlete, professional, college, uh, you know, Anthony, who's your favorite athlete, would you uh, say? My favorite athlete of all time is uh, Mahmoud abdul Rauf, the <laughs> old Nuggets yeah. player. Yeah. Old, formerly Chris Jackson, Chris Jackson of yeah. LSU. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, I remember the Nuggets. They had 
eight or nine lottery picks on that team. Yeah. I was actually a, a Chicago Bulls fan, and that was when Jordan retired for yeah. a couple of years. I was in yeah. Laramie looking for another team, being disappointed, and along came Mahmoud and, yeah. and that great Nuggets team from then. Uh, okay, uh, the, the third question then, who, who would you say has been your biggest mentor, influence uh, in your overall journey? Is someone, you know, either as a, as a player, coach, uh, who's, who's sort of put you where you are now on this road? Probably my biggest mentor. I mean, I have so many. Mm-hmm. You know, I have so many, but my closest would be Michael Ball, you know, okay. the, the head men's coach at Metro State. You know, he's been a best friend of mine, you know, okay. for 10 years. Okay. okay. Uh, did you have a rival any, at any point, a rival coach, a, a rival player on another team? Is there anybody out there who just, oh, boy, did they get you every time and you're glad you never have to see them again? Not really. Not really. <laughs> I, I, I loved Good. everybody so much. Like, I loved even the, those players that would try to get under your skin. Sure. You know, and you get that a lot, especially at junior college. Uh-huh. Like, you would get that a lot. Like, but I just, I loved it so much. I, I mean, I remember when I was at Metro State, like, DeAndre Lansdowne, you know, we were always okay. like, when is he ever going to graduate? You know, I mean, come on. I remember feeling that, but I also loved, you know, being okay. able to compete against okay. him. Oh, we got Riley Ferris here now yeah. making teams <laughs> around the conference going, oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, so last one. What, what is, uh, you know, what's the one thing, you know, give me one word that, that you want people, if, if, if I ask anybody else here, give me one word to describe our women's basketball program under Taylor Harris. What's yeah. that one word identity piece that you look for in your teams? Love. Nice. That's our word. Nice. Yeah, that's everything. You've even got a whole love your enemy thing going yeah, on. I do. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. really – so, you know, and I, sorry, it's an extra question. <laughs> I love it. Uh, the, the, the product of love is joy. Is that, is, is that we're going to just see pure joy on the basketball court? Because that's fun. I, I yeah. mean, it really is. So, so do, you, do you feel like you actually produce that product in, in the basketball with, with that overriding philosophy of love? Does, does joy come of that too? Oh, yeah. I mean, and we're going to probably test some people's, you know, thought of how a team or how a coach should act – because we have fun. Nice. You know, we have a lot of fun on the sideline. We're laughing. We're, you know, they're hugging each other. I mean, if there's a cool song playing on, on the PA system, like, we'll probably, we might dance. Like, that's, just, that's what <laughs> nice. we did. I mean, that's just, how, that's just sure. how it is. We have fun. Well, good. Well, thanks, Taylor. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. I've appreciated meeting you, and uh, I'm looking forward to next season. Thank you very much. Thank All you right. so much. That will wrap it up for this season of the Skyhawks Coaches Corner. We have got to thank. The fine folks here at the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum for being gracious host all year. Uh, they've just been fantastic to work with. And of course, thank the folks at Centura Health and Mercy Regional Medical Center for helping us bring you this program week after week. I'm your host, Bob Bonner uh, from Fort Lewis College Athletics. It's been fun doing these this year. Hope we can be back next year. Have a great summer, everybody. Keep soaring.